Okay, Elon Musk says that college is for fun, it's not really for learning, and it is not necessarily evidence of exceptional ability. I agree with him 100%. Anybody can learn anything they want, and if you go to school and you just accept what they teach you, then you have not learned anything. <laughs> if you follow me, you will find out that what you were taught in school is just not correct, and, and on any level now. Now, this is the guy I admire, though, because he pushed forward. I've been watching the titans of American industry, and they're talking about Edison and Tesla and Westinghouse and all these different big shots, the early ones. Well, Tesla got, died penniless and was disgraced for his whole life and fought, fought against the system. That's what I do. <laughs> you know, but all the rest of them were were aggressive enough to push forward their ideas in huge you know that's a lot of work trust me i had i had a ton of ideas i i and i was successful i wasn't i didn't you know i'm not penniless and i'm not going to die penniless i hope <laughs> but um i certainly didn't achieve anything like anybody that's achieved you know success let's call it so let's just see why I think he could probably use electron flood theory. I mean, this guy is doing the SpaceX stuff. He should understand this. So, Elon, give me a call, buddy. Okay, my friends, it's Roger, and today we are finally going to understand the nucleus, which is right here, and these are the electrons that surround the nucleus. Well, this is not correct whatsoever. They're saying that the protons, and these here are neutrons, are in the core, and then these little bitty electrons float around. They make them look like they're all the same size. It's, it's, it's complete nonsense, first of all, because there's no reason that minuses would stay away from the pluses. They come together. And there's no reason for any of this. I'm going to show you the truth, and here is the truth right here. That is a helium. The core is made up of all electrons. This is electron flood theory. There is no protons and neutrons. So in the core of this helium is going to be a bazillion electrons all clustered together and then two more want to get in of the electrons and they're held away saying no we have enough and which is 1837 actually proton it's a proton they say it's 13, 1836 but it's 1837 makes it a positive 1838 makes it a neutral and which is the neutron so those are the two weights that we have to take into account. So if they say there's two protons, so let's say hydrogen, the base base hydrogen has one electron and one proton. Well, the proton is 1837 times as much as the electron. Now, the number one might be 1839 times as big. I'm not sure, but it's more, it's enough particles in the core to bring it to resonance stable frequency and it just keeps going up and up and up it starts like say 350 hertz something like that it locks and that's where one hydrogen is okay and then higher up and then a helium is okay and then a little higher up and that and lithium locks in and this is what how all these things and you get into the rule of eight when you start to get above the lowest orbitals. I go into this in extreme detail. I mean as deep as you can get. Now, that is the actual core. And the positive parts will, they those will touch each other and they don't hurt each other. They don't try to force each other away. The negative parts push each other away. That's what creates electricity, magnetism. The, it's, it's the whole shooting match. I can explain to you extremely easy and you will see it as well. So, the core is nothing more than an accumulation of particles. It's not like four or five or six or ten big huge chunks. It's thousands and thousands of tiny electrons and then at a certain point it becomes stable and then some more want to get in and they say no you have to stay out there in that 
orbital, but you can stay right there. There'll be one like in a pocket right here, and a pocket over here, and a pocket over there, and they'll stay out there, and they'll stay right there. You'll force heat into them, they'll just shake around and stuff, but and, and they'll become hot, and they'll have excess electrons coming in. That's what makes metals glow. I'm going to go through all this stuff. Okay, my claim is that we can forget protons and we forget neutrons. Um, we, wherever there was a proton, we'll add, I believe it's 1837. They say 1836. I say 1837. Wherever there's a neutron, add 1838. And other than that, the electrons in the cloud are tiny little particles, which are these tiny particles, and, and 1837 of them makes up a proton. That's all it is. It's not one gigantic chunk in the center and a little tiny chunks out here that are the opposite charge, but the same charge. It's, it really just made no sense ever, so let's fix it. Now, I have all my old books, and I did, I did this stuff in extreme detail 50 years ago, and I got to the point where I could understand literally everything about it except the nucleus. I could not get to the nucleus how the nucleus could have these big protons and these big electrons. But I did all of the labs and I did I converted things into electricity from heat and from you know all the different series and parallel and all of the different molecular arrangements and bond angles and and um, orbitals and periods and I mean I did it all trust me I, and I tested everything out that I could test and the only reason I had to um, you know like Elon Musk says you don't have to go to school but I needed to go to have the labs to have the equipment and even then it was rudimentary but without that I never would have been able to do the the deep stuff that that proved the things that I was saying to myself, but I still couldn't get to the core. And now this is the core. They're all electrons and they just glue together in the, in the core until they hit a certain frequency that is a stable number and then after that it trails off into your different isotopes. Because you know there's not just a certain number here and a certain number here and a certain number there. In between them there's a bazillion different isotopes. So. All of those have to be accounted for, and this does. Electron flood theory does. So, Elon, give me a call, buddy. I am going to go next into the Bohr model, and I'm going to go into all of the ultraviolet catastrophe and all, all, everything. Because I'm going to I can account for every single thing, the sprites, the elves, the 100% static, the poles, the corona, heavy corona, everything. 100%.